Hi guys. What's up? Just getting all set up. Hi guys. What's up? Just getting all set up. Okay. So I should be live. Okay. Let me know you're here. Give me a howdy. Give me a what's up. Give so I should be live. Let me know you're here. Give me a howdy. Give me a what's up. So I should be Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. I'm going to wait till somebody's on. Okay, I'm sorry that this, uh, there's a small delay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. Feeling a little fish out of water, as always. So interesting getting used to this technology. Um, I would love to see if someone's coming out with me live. So let me know if you're with me live, give me a hello, give me a what's up, give me a hey, hey type at me so I can see you. I want to make sure that I am live. I believe that I am. All right. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I didn't advertise this week, although I do Spark of Wisdom every single week. And it's always at seven o'clock Central Standard Time every Wednesday. And I will tell you, it's always super overwhelming. <laughs> In the summertime, uh, my husband and I own a food truck and um, so it's always busy, but also, you know, it's extra when we have, um, you know, the, the actual moon cycle switching on the day of Oracle. So it's just a lot to handle. So I appreciate your flexibility. I appreciate your feedback. I want to make sure that I'm being heard. I am. I am. Okay. So hopefully you guys will find this today. We're going to roll the dice. I've got six different Oracle that could come up, you know, Today, things have been very overwhelming these last uh, couple days. So I hope that you're all doing well. I know I've been hanging in there. Um, lots of, you know, <laughs> I wanna say lots of ups and downs, a little bit of a roller coaster ride. So today's Oracle is meant to support all of us, including myself. I look forward to the wisdom coming through just as much as everybody else does. And where I was guided to go this week is really interesting and I love it because um, not too long ago, just a few hours ago, I was finally able to, you know, I was closing one cycle, walking into another. And so it's just like literally could not connect to channel. Um, I have not channeled the animal wisdom, wisdom yet, but I do know that we are still hovering around the solar plexus collectively um, as the bat came forward. So Trish is here. She needs to be right back. Okay, girl, well, I'm happy you're here. So yeah, the bat is coming in. And of course, right off the cuff, the bat is known to have the sixth sense, the sense of sonar, the sense of hearing um, and there are some unique bats as we're gonna find out uh, associated with Uluru, which is the solar plexus of the world. And so it's just so 
freaking interesting. Hey, Christy, we are just getting started. I'm so happy you guys are here. So basically what happened is I went led to Uluru. I'm learning about some of the bats and then bada boom, bada bing, bing bong, bing. I'm led to the stars, the four royal stars. And boy, am I so excited to learn about them. This feels so, so synchronistic. I've got full, full goosebumps. The four, the four royal stars are known as the lords. They're called the watchers. And in Hindu, the watchers are the agents of karma. I've got full blown goosebumps as I'm just, uh, sharing this with you guys. It's really amazing. So not only do the stars represent Okay, um, who, which deck, hold on, I'm trying, trying to see here, just a moment. Okay, there we go. Oh, Carla's here too. Hey, girlfriend, I miss you, my friend. Okay, so these stars, depending on which one you chose, not only represent um, uh, one of the brightest stars in the sky, guiding us, adding to the cosmic energy overall, but they're also associated with an archangel. They're associated with their direction. And I'm just super, super pumped up to see what's going to come through. So it's going to be a lot of fun. When I was getting ready, which was really quickly, because like I said, this has all happened since five o'clock in the last couple hours. I just had to get out and get a couple of miles today, which was so great. I've just been so ungrounded. So the biggest thing is happening for one, happening for all. So make sure you're staying grounded. Make sure you're taking care of yourself, hydrating. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to be real. I've been... Uh, I've been, it's so interesting. I just feel like I've had many moments of frustration in this last week as that Phoenix is rising, right? And so this was so cool to be led to this because one of the four stars is called Antares. And that is literally translates to the bat um, in the dreaming of the bat from the Aboriginal people. And so it's just really um, amazing. Let's get into it, right? We've, we're going to be rolling the dice today. I mean, spirit is just keeping us on our toes. So we're going to be rolling the dice to see what deck we're going for. I'm, guys, it's amazing. I have eight decks of Oracle in front of me. So it's going to be super awesome to see what comes through. So Basically how I posted the stars, and I want you to know that these are going to resonate with you, okay? Whenever I do Oracle, it'll always resonate with you. So if you didn't pick an actual picture, do not fret. I will be doing timestamps. I will be adding uh, the YouTube, you know, it's, it's, so if you want to rewatch, I am not offended. Um, this is coming in real time. Um, it may, you may resonate with an angel. Okay, you may resonate with a star, use your pendulum, um, really feel it out for yourself, okay? But we're gonna be rolling the deck to see which oracle we're gonna be using. And we also have the wealth offering and we have the crystals coming forward. So we're gonna be doing that for each deck. Let's go ahead and get started with the first one, okay? Which is Eldebaran. Eldebaran is the very first star. Now, what's interesting is this is the Watcher of the East. It's affiliated with the spring equinox. It is the bloodshot eye of the constellation of Taurus. Okay, it's associated with rain. It's called the Follower, and it's the red giant star in the sky. Now, as interesting as all this is, it is affiliated with Archangel Michael. So that is the star that's coming forward. Let's pull the dice to see which deck is we're going to be using today. And we're getting number five, okay? We're getting number five. And I love it because these are my medicine cards. And right on top, I haven't, I haven't shuffled, uh, but right on, right on the bottom here is the raven. And so I'm feeling the, the, the magic affiliated with this reading, to be honest with you. So let's go ahead and give this um, a shuffle. So we've got an eight. We're going to go ahead and shuffle your energy in. 
Okay, we're gonna shuffle your energy in. We're gonna do two more. Got the badger coming forward. It's interesting because when I'm seeing already, <laughs> And the dragonfly, we're emerging. I love this. Okay. What I'm seeing here already is what we have been seeing. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull, actually, we're just going to pull one card here in just a moment. But now that we know the deck, we're going to go into um, our crystals. And we want to get familiar. The crystals have been helping us these last couple weeks um with the situation the energy around us okay so these are beautiful cards there's 66 of them these are actually what began my attunement process so i am offering crystal attunements by popular demand we've got petrified wood here you know which is so interesting because this is um, a deep cleanser, a really deep cleanser. So, you know, Archangel Michael coming through this constellation. I'm feeling the root chakra, <laughs> Lemurian, <laughs> Lemurian crystal coming through. These are all just little clues as we shuffle in, okay? So let's go ahead and, and let's find out what is going on for those of you that chose this first, this first star, Aldebaran. Let's find out, oh, we have a beautiful sapphire. Beautiful sapphire coming forward. Take a look at this Mandela. I love that it's number nine because I've been feeling the healing um, with this particular deck the entire time, okay? It's time to get to the root of things. These are deep healings is what I'm feeling. And I love that I'm also seeing, because I was picking up on this pairing, so do you see how it's got this pairing all the way around, um, which I think is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look, see what the sapphire, which is, you know, just a gorgeous stone, one of my favorite, actually. Let's go ahead. I have not attuned to sapphire yet, have not been led to that. <laughs> Who knows? Could be led to that with this reading. We'll find out. But the sapphire, okay, so what we're talking about is this is the element of the ethers. This is all about your vision, about what you see, okay? So I'm not surprised to see that because how are you rooted in and how are you feeling grounded? I'm already getting messages about the more you're grounded, the more you can see. This affects your third eye. Sapphire is an inspired, luminous gem that guides us deep within to our inner master and guide. Once this relationship with ourselves is established, we can develop a sense of direction and purpose. And, you know, the sense of direction that we have with this particular star is this is the watcher of the east, okay? So if you think about the direction of the east, that can lead you in many different ways. Nicoletta, what's up, my friend? Um, that can lead you in, in, in many different ways, okay? So I love, I'm looking on bottom. We just shuffled for you guys, and I'm seeing on bottom confirming the third eye is the lapis lazuli. This is... Um, a healing in the direction of getting in touch with where you're going. And I love that we have the guidance of the animals. So we've got this situation is all about getting in touch and being guided into a direction of purpose. We rolled the dice number five, which shows that we have a change going on. It shows that this is a deep healing um, and it shows that it's regal. Like this is something that I'm feeling really regal about. We're going to go ahead and on the bottom, yeah, I was feeling this. It's like, you know, this healing is coming down and leading us to our abundance in different ways. And for those of you that, cho that chose this one, it's really all about your freedom, okay? It's really all about your freedom. We've got the armadillo, <laughs> all right? A hard nut to crack is what I just heard, a hard nut to crack you know, is the armadillo. Um, we've got the vibration of a 10 here. And so whenever I see um, 
an animal that has a shell. It, it's like right there, you can already tell that there is a reason. In fact, if you look at these ridges, it's like what I'm feeling from those of you that chose this, just like we're choosing the four royal stars. It's like, it's like those of you that came and chose this particular star, the watcher of the East, um, you know, I'm feeling like you're, you see these ridges, these are mountains you've climbed, these are healings that you've done in previous lifetimes, and you're bringing it forward to this time. And I am noticing, okay, uh, that we're looking at the left, that this is more your female energy. I'm feeling with Archangel Michael here, in order for us to close this particular cycle that we're in, that we need to let go of these mountains. We need to let go of these cords that we've attached to and on previous timelines, okay? These are deep cords is what I'm trying to say, okay? But we also have one of the brightest stars coming out to guide you. So um, I just think that that is so beautiful. I do wanna look uh, real quick um, that's the channeled message that I'm getting as we're going here. Yeah, I was, okay, I was feeling it, okay? So let's listen to this, this poem real quick. The Armadillo, these are my uh, medicine cards. I love these cards. And it says, Armadillo, arm all, armor all my boundaries. Teach me my shields. Reflect all the hurt so I, so I will not yield. And I love this because this is what I was feeling. Like these are cords and that you need to ask your angels to, you know, the angels are here and Archangel Michael is with you and he carries the power, you know, the, the sword of truth and power, and he can help you cut these cords. The armadillo wears its armor on its back. It's medicine it's medicine, a part of its body. Its boundaries of safety are the part of a total being. Armadillo can roll in a ball and can never be penetrated. And so Archangel Michael literally wants you to know, i loving how this is coming together, that you are so protected. And some of these um, some of these um, energies that I'm feeling, they're carried in the back, they're carried deep within your, with your energy, and what they are is they are distractions, they are worry warts, they are um, memories, memories that are trying to exploit you and distract you, okay? What a gift it is to send boundaries so that, and we're going to go, I'm going to read this because whenever we talk about boundaries, Jay, come on, honey. Um, yeah, a lot of people are like, think it has to be rigid. Hey, Rayma. Um, but what a gift it is to send boundaries so that harmful words or intentions just roll off. Your lesson is setting up what you are willing to experience. If you do not wish to experience feeling invaded, call upon the armadillo medicine. A clue to how to proceed is to make a circle on a piece of paper and see it as a medicine shield. In the body of the shield, write down all that you are desiring to have, do, or experience. Include all things that give you joy. I love that this is giving you something practical. This sets up the boundaries that allow only the chosen experiences to be part of your life. These boundaries become a shield that wards off the things that are undesirable to you. So you're creating your own shield, even more beautiful. The shield reflects what you are and what you will, what your will is to others on an unconscious level. Outside the shield, you may put what you are willing to experience by invitation only. For example, a visit from a long lost relative, criticism from friends or people needing handouts. If the armadillo has waddled into your cards, it is time for you to, to define your space. You may be too willing to let your home become a bus station. You may find that you cannot even say no when you know <laughs> that you will have to cancel plans. This routine can get old in a hurry. It may be time to ask yourself the following questions. Thank you, Armadillo. Are you ready, guys? 
Am I honoring the time I need for my personal enjoyment? Do others treat me like a doormat? Why do I always get upset when I'm taken for granted? Number four, is there a reason for, for my being a yes person? All of these answers to these questions relate to setting boundaries. What you will and won't do. What makes you feel uncomfortable and what is comforting to you. How you react to any circumstance has to do with your ability to be objective. You cannot be objective if you cannot tell where the other person's personality stops and where yours begins. If you have no boundaries, you're like a sponge. It will seem as if all the feelings in the room full of people must be yours. Ask yourself if you're really feeling depressed or if this feeling belongs to the person you're talking to, then allow the armadillo's armor to slice in between, giving you back your sense of self. Wow. Thank you to the armadillo medicine. <laughs> Who did not learn something amazing just right there, right? Wow. Okay. This is really, really super inspiring. And we're talking about our freedom, our freedom. When you set the boundaries, you actually develop your freedom. Okay. Because I have a sense that just like this is a big red star, you guys that chose this are big energetic systems and you can take on other people's energy, which is why I was feeling all these cords here. I was feeling like a traffic jam when I looked at this, okay? And so this is just really getting in touch with your boundaries. It's not a bad thing. This is a great thing. This is what will allow you to sparkle. This is the healing. And, I'll, and I'm loving the color blue coming in because you know this is allowing your authenticity. When you get to the root of what holds you back, not having boundaries, you can now have your own authentic voice come forward. So beautiful. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for being here with us during this. Now, let's go ahead and find out the Wild Offering Oracle, which is a prayer, a prayer for each of you, okay? And then, so this is the first one. If you would like to join me for attunements, speaking of blue, we've got four attunements or repeats. We have, you know, the reason we're here at the solar plexus is because we're all collectively dealing, you know, with some perspective of a solar plexus healing, which affects our authentic voice. And so they work together and we're all going through this. We're just at different vantage points on the scale, right? Um, well, let's see what prayer is coming forward for those of you. Wouldn't you know it? Simple, simple and lovely. What comes after the five is the six. And whenever I think of six, I think of integration, okay? So whenever you're going through a shift, the most challenging part is to think about the numbers before and after. So when you're going through a shift, which is the five, we know that there's a new structure coming up, okay? So the phoenix came up last week. We're burning away. We're rebirthing into that new structure. This is the shift. And then six is the integration, which always highlights grace and gratitude, okay? So that's my biggest tips to you. This says, find just one thing that you are grateful for right now. You know what, put it in the comments for those of you that chose the first star, just so that we can all, you know, see what you're grateful for. Put it in the comments right now and let that gratitude pour through your body. It's a healing balm, like the warmth of the sun, like the warmth of the sun. And you know, what's really interesting is this is associated with the rain, okay? This is the bloodshot eye. So this is all about allowing yourself to be grateful, allowing yourself to root into this new, this newness. It's going to feel wonky for a little bit. So find things to be grateful as you go and just know 
that, you know, it's that sapphire that's coming. And this is a beautiful gem. And Archangel Michael is here for you. So we have so many wonderful advice for you guys. Um, and I wanted to go on bottom because I felt like there was another message. So on the bottom, it's clarifying about your body and that your body will lead you. How do you know when you're in a state of gratitude? It's how you feel, how your body communicates with you. So your body says, show me, divine, how to love and fully care for this body. Please give me the radiant miracle of accepting my body as it is. Just beautiful, okay? Just beautiful. And of course, in these prayers, I noticed that we've got a lot of the reds here and being grateful and then the overtones with the blues. So I'm feeling that red and blue color leading you through this shift. Let the armadillo medicine be with you. I wish you nothing but love and healing. If you need some Reiki, please check into these attunements, I promise. <coughs> whoa, as my throat chakra is being hit up there, I promise that you will absolutely love it, okay? I'm trying to get to these new comments. Nicoletta, I miss you, girl. It's been for Evs. Okay, so those are the readings for um, deck number one. That was really fun. Just never know what's gonna come through, okay? So thank you to the animals. Let's go ahead and move on to our second star, which is all about healing because it is Regulus, okay? This is the second one. This is a blue and white binary star, meaning it is two that work together. <coughs> This particular star is five times like brighter than the sun, okay? It is the watcher of the north. It is affiliated with the number 21 and the number 40 because that's the orbit that it takes for both stars. And this is known as the little prince, okay? Yes, it's the blue one, Trish. We're on number two, the blue one. And we are talking about Archangel Raphael coming in. For those of you that chose this one, man, let's find out. I can just tell that these are going to just be such incredible uh, readings. Let's find out what, oh, I can already tell the moonstone. So those of you that chose this one are, um, you know, I'm saying the moon is, is a good for you to follow. Multivite, okay, Multivite coming through. Um, these are all just little simple tips for those of you. We're going to do one more to get you shuffled in. And here we've got sugar light. You know, this came up last week. So is this, this, did you choose this last week too? And it's interesting because every time I pull this, I just hear like sugar daddy, sugar daddy. So I'm feeling that those of you, I'm feeling um, a lot of divine feminines. I was feeling that in the first one. So could it be uh -huh, that this, oh, and this is affiliated with Leo, okay? With the constellation of Leo. So, wow. Here we go. We've got Crossacolia. Crossacolia, all about abundance. Look at this beautiful Mandela. Isn't this gorgeous? These blues coming in. We're getting to the center. Let's find out. I, I, oh my gosh, that royal blue color in the background. Affiliate, I'm going to turn my light on. That royal blue color in the background. Now I am attuned to this particular, um, this particular one, uh, which is fantastic. Yes, this is the sacral chakra. So I was feeling that feminine. Did I say that divine feminine? This is the odd element of water, which is interesting because Leo is fire. So we've got this um, like opposite to attract feeling fire and water, but. Chris, uh, Crystal Cola travels on the blue ray of communication. 
encouraging deep and heartfelt expression. It supports honesty and feelings, and it will support the release of any tension in the throat chakra. Isn't that interesting? Because, um, I'm, you know, it's associated with that blue, but it has a very strong presence and it asks us to express our vulnerability and our sensitivity here on earth. It puts us in touch with profound feminine qualities within ourselves. Wow. So this is so awesome. And I'm reading a note here that I attuned to this uh, last month. Um, and for me, uh, this was one of the attunements that I sent to my ancestors and to my um, and to my relatives. So that is definitely that feminine quality. So we are really honing in on our feminine energy. Let's roll the dice and see. Let's get some information. All right, we got a four, okay? So we got a four, so we know that this is a, a structure. So cute. We know this is a change in structure. This is what number four means to me. It's also the archangels, and it's no surprise that we have the archangel oracle coming forward for you guys specifically. So let's see what the archangels want to talk to us about. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle in your energy. My daughter, Jordan, wants to say hi. Come on over, Jordan. <clears throat> Interesting enough, look at, we're getting the horse, cut to the horse for you guys. Go ahead and say hi, sweetie. Hi. All right. Thanks, honey. Okay. So um, let's go ahead. The horse, the unicorn already coming forward. We're going to shuffle in your energy as I see the cow. Okay. And one more. The llama. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's let's find out what we're dealing with here. What is our feminine energy trying to show us? Look at this. I mean, how more in tune can we get to the feminine energy more than the wolf, right? Now, I feel like this is really a huge, <laughs> a huge card for some of those who came here. Like you were meant to come here because the wolf talks about being independent, but also working together, okay? And so sometimes we get latched onto the idea of the lone wolf, or sometimes we feel that we are alone. Your angels are here to tell you you're not alone. Not only are you not alone, others are watching, okay? Nicoletta says, the llama has a message for me, I feel. Ooh, we can look that up, and actually we'll see if it comes up in the cards. As I'm looking on the bottom, I see our friends, the Badgers, okay? So this is the build. Be very interesting to see those of you that chose the uh, last week. Remember the Badger came forward. We were talking about the grid workers. We were talking about those that are making their mark, right? And when we look at the grid and we associate that with Archangel Raphael and, and the idea of healing, it really kind of brings things forward um, along with the wolf. And I love that my daughter Jordan came up on this because this is the thing. The wolf are associated with what they teach their young. And no matter what you may think when it comes to Oracle, okay, um, and tarot, I, I don't really do tarot. I do uh, more Oracle. It's more um, intuitive. I trust my intuitive prompts. But I just want to say there's nothing I wouldn't say around my daughter um, that I would say to you. Okay, so I hope that just shows something here, but I cannot uh, help but notice the teamwork here. Okay, now what's really interesting is this whole this um, wolf is actually with the moon, and we were getting the moonstone and being in cycle with the moon, and I'm also getting like Raphael wants us to know that part of our healing is this cosmic energy coming in. And wouldn't you know it, that this is affiliated with lion, with Leo and we have Lionsgate portal coming up, right? So 
I have a really big sense that Lionsgate is really important energy for those of you that chose this, okay? So could it be Lionsgate, the number eight, the energy that's coming up on our crystal, right? Leading us to our authentic expression. Couldn't it be that to get to the center of who we are, the cross of cola, which is like the shell, okay? Getting to the spiral, if you think about it, it's like this spiral getting to the center of this lion's gate portal is going to be really important for those of you that chose this. Okay. <laughs> As I look on bottom, because I was just curious, what's going to be on bottom to confirm the crystal and I'm getting labradite. Okay. Which is really interesting because Labradite, a lot of people, uh, it's a beautiful crystal. It has all these, um, it's like a gray with all these like iridescent colors, but it has the vibration of a seven. And that's what I'm loving more. It's all about following the steps, okay? Following the steps. And that's what I, I believe, I am believing <laughs> following the steps as we see Emerald to your heart, okay? following the steps to your heart is what I'm feeling. And also knowing that others are watching you, that you're paving the way for others. So this is all about a community. This is all about working more than just you. Okay. Nicoletta says, Cirrus energy is very strong now. Hello, beautiful Jordan. Aw. Yeah, she says, hi. Okay. And what's the most important tip that we're getting here, um, you know, especially from the Badgers, this is all about balance, okay? This is all about balance. This is all about calling out, calling out, you know, when, when the, when the um, wolf howls at the moon, they're actually calling out to the pack, asking for the support that they need. Okay. And so that's what I'm feeling here so much with you, but let's go ahead and pull out and see what the book has to say real quick, because, you know, Hey, we're teaching you to be your own guru. And look at this, look at this Nicoletta, the regal canines originate from Cirrus. Yes. And they have a mission of spreading the gold, the gold ray of Christ wherever they wander. And I love that because the gold ray is affiliated with the solar plexus. And this is where we're really being guided. It's this Atlantean energy. So this is where we've been for weeks and weeks and weeks. This is a very deep healing. So this is just your part of it. Okay. They have formidable healing powers and they are spiritual teachers in the animal kingdom. That's for sure. Individually, they are extremely independent, but they're learning that there is more effective work as the pack. And this is the biggest piece of advice for those of you that chose this, is that yes, you can work independently, but think about the fact that we're not meant to. And what I mean is to be part of the all is to participate in the all. Two minds are better than one, okay? It takes two to tango. Uh, I'm, and like all these little like things are coming up. When the wolf gives his trust, he gives his loyalty and his heart. This applies to their own kind and to those humans in who they've developed confidence. Wolves are learning about family life with its very strict hierarchy and discipline. Males and females are considered equals which means the masculine and the feminine energy within the pack is balanced. And what were we talking about? Every wolf has a role to play so that no one, so that each one feels needed and important. This is the card of a spiritual teacher. When you choose it, you're reminded to be disciplined about your spiritual practice, as this is a very important to your progress. Act nobly and honorably whenever the circumstances for many will look up to you. And I was feeling that. Uh, we're on the second one, Jolene. Okay. We're on number uh, the second star, which is the first blue star. You must learn to trust your inner guidance, then decide who you have confidence in and give them your loyalty. This is just so interesting because this is the deeper aspect of the solar plexus. 
um, which I just think is so beautiful and synchronistic. You need to know who you can trust because you have wisdom and healing to impart. Look for like-minded others and gather them to you as together you can fulfill your mission more effectively than when you work alone. Whether you're aware of it or not, you can spread the unconditional love and light of the goal ray of Christ, which has a huge energetic impact on those around you. And weren't we feeling that? Weren't we feeling that energy, right? Is, you know, that we're bringing that people are watching us and we're influencing those around us. Those of you that chose this. Okay. So you are our spiritual teachers and, you know, most likely you are going through something so deep and it's just about what we're guiding you about is to just allow the steps, right? And this lion's gate portal in particular for you guys that chose this particular um, star is very, very important as this is the star in the Leo constellation. Okay. So this is really a very deep, um, deep, deep, deep healing for you. Yes. Remember, this is a binary. So this is not just affecting you. It's affecting those around you. And this is all about the North. So I'm feeling a lot of air elements here too and being guided, okay? So 40 day orbit, keep that in mind. We we're talking about your, about your structure. We rolled a four and spirit is coming in to help you with your structure, help you with your authenticity. But at the same point in time, there's cosmic energy coming in. We've got to let, you know, spirit. Uh, guide us. This is the little prince coming in to give us our guidance and how we can stand in our power as the queens owning our throne, you know, and, and, and just using that visual of wearing your crown, okay? Stepping into your crown, knowing that those are around you and how a queen acts, right? How a king acts for those of you that are masculine. It's what is best for all. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's just really, really awesome. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and get a prayer for you guys. And I wanted to see if that, uh, that llama, I can always send you that Nicoletta remind me if you guys ever want like bigger things on a card, just let me know. I can always send you the page, right? Um, because, hey, we, we, we do understand what's coming in for, for us. All right, so let's go ahead and find out what's the prayer that we're interesting is right away I'm getting the card loneliness. So I just want to encourage you that chose this pile. I know as a spiritual teacher, um, direction, I'm feeling, I'm really feeling that, okay? And so that's why Archangel Raphael is here to tell you, to let those of you that chose this pile to know, I know it feels lonely. I know you feel out of sorts. What is my direction? There's almost like this questioning going on, but remember to hold your crown. Remember to not allow yourself to slip as this is a deep, a deep test of your faith in spirit more than anything. So, ooh, ooh, that just resonates so deep, okay? So let's see, what is the prayer that the angels have for you? Well, <laughs> you're gonna be traveling soon. That is the prayer, okay? Travel of all sorts. Uh, coming your way. Let every aspect of this trip unfold in harmony. May divine order arrange and handle every detail. Full-blown goosebumps. I will be guided easily. I will follow the leads as they are shown. So what is the biggest thing that we're getting here for those of you that chose this is to allow is yes, you can do, yes, you can push. I just heard you could push, 
but what can you get when you pull? Wow, okay? So that is just so amazing when you pull it into you, the guidance, and to ask, to ask, because <coughs> companionship, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful on bottom. Let's confirm it. This is that higher, look at this pink, okay? This pink energy. We've got this green to pink. This is really related to this deep heart alchemy and how it affects those around you. And so this companionship, I love it. What a beautiful card. When you, when you fully bless and embrace, and embrace blah, 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 let's start over. <laughs> uh, when you fully bless and embrace your aloneness, you're ready for the ones who are meant to be with you. Wow. How synchronistic is this all coming together? May I welcome this solitude knowing it will be open, that it will open the way for all healthy relationships. How gorgeous is that? And so this is about divine timing. Those of you that chose this pile, you were led here to know that you are in the right place. That's why we got the four, okay? I'm thinking four, four, four. You're probably seeing the fours. This is just another, you know, because, because, it, because the process in itself, has it, it can feel very isolating. So just knowing that this is on a bigger scale Things are coming together, okay? And you're traveling step by step and you are never alone, okay? The angels want you to know you are not alone. You, um, you are just going through the fire. You're walking through the fire and we're getting that fire in the rain, right? So it's a, like allow spirit to to sprinkle the rain on you. And what does the rain do? It just really grounds you in the moment. It, it allows you to be in the moment. So if you have a chance to walk in the rain, okay? I love that because it really, it, everything is different in the rain, okay? And, you know, I just really have a sense that when you feel the raindrops, it, it calms the burn. Okay, so the biggest thing, the biggest thing before we move on to the third one is remember to call upon Archangel Raphael. He, um, he leads with, you know, he helps the heart as this is all coming together. This is about the heart chakra, how that affects you stepping into your power and how that affects your authenticity. And this is going really deep as we're revisiting with the back coming forward again, um, the bats of Uluru specifically, we are still in the solar plexus, this Atlantean energy as things close in. So just hang in there, my friends. Um, uh, hopefully this resonates with you and gives you lots of, um, lots of guidance and love and support because the angels are literally moving the stars tonight to do that. So it's just so beautiful. Um, Delina says, I don't know why I never get notified. Oh, you know what? This is a great time. Hi, girl. Thank you for being here. Um, you can always watch the replay. I will add timestamps. Okay. We're moving on to the third constellation. So you've got plenty of time to come in. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'll be honest, the energies have been a lot for me. I'm pretty sensitive and I just been trying to keep myself together and grounded. And so um, I loving how this is coming together because it was, it's just all put together by trusting spirit and using my pendulum. And I encourage you to do the same. Sometimes we get ourselves, we get in the way. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the third one. We've got Archangel Uriel coming forward with this really, now those of you that chose the third one, okay, which is I believe the huge yellow star, you chose the star Antares, which is the watcher of the West. Um, 
And this is all about the autumn equinox. This particular star is the heart of the scorpion constellation, okay? So this is <laughs> what influenced this whole reading is the Antares is the bat, which is the animal that came forward. So those of you that chose this, I'm already super feeling the sixth sense. I feeling like, actually I'm feeling like you guys have some gifting coming online. Let's find out, yeah. You got four too. So the archangels want to talk to you um, about a structure, a structure change. <laughs> I'm hearing like uh, it's funny because in my in my mind's eye, I'm hearing like you know like when um, a truck backs up and it's like ding 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 ding. Yes, I'm getting that this there's construction under construction. Okay, so let's find out what the angels have for you guys i'm going to shuffle in your energy i didn't uh, let's break up the energy of the last reading let's give it a couple shuffles okay and um okay so let's get the energy around you first though so i love these crystal cards for doing that man i hope that you guys are resonating with these um just a reminder that I'm offering for two minutes. Now, if you're not exactly sure what a two minute is, it's like basically, you know, Reiki is an attunement. And so when I went to uh, be attuned to Reiki, a teacher added that to my grid. And so um, I have found by working with Mother Earth in my sacred work with Mother Earth, I'm able to send attunements to a grid as I have found that I'm a grid worker um, setting up the new earth. And so um, I'm actually able to send these attunements to other people and there's no energy exchange. It's just like another tool, right? Christy says I'm ready because I am at an intersection. Oh, okay. As I just changed to the angel aura, which is a beautiful attunement. And I cannot wait, wait. I cannot wait to, to share that attunement. But let's go ahead and get the energy. Ooh, that one wanted to pop out. So we're gonna champagne aura. So we've got a lot going on with your aura. And look at the sapphire is back. Okay. So just in case now, okay. So the numbers are already talking to me. We have 64 and a nine. Okay. I know that nine is a prime. And what's interesting is I know that four <laughs> is so interesting that I'm getting like, what's the prime number of 64? Is that, isn't that eight? That's so weird that I'm questioning myself. My phone's dead. You guys can tell me what's the square root of 64? Is it four? Because I'm feeling like it is. <laughs> okay. So those of you that just joined me, somebody help me out. Um, we've got the sapphire bouncing out for you, but there's just really um, something else that wanted to bounce out. I just want to reread it in case you weren't with us earlier because Sapphire is quite beautiful. It's, this is all about your vision. So those of you that chose this about your vision, and by the way, this week, you may have more than one star that resonates. You might have more than one this week, um, but this has to do with the other ethers. Sapphire in, inspires, uh, excuse me, Sapphire is an inspired gem that guides us deep within to our inner master and guide. Once this relationship with ourselves is established, we can develop a sense of direction and purpose. So those of you, it's getting to the center, right? And it's guiding you. And the champagne aura is really interesting because I'm feeling like there is, the aura itself is coming up. And champagne, this is literally giving us a couple clues. Time to celebrate, okay? Um, yeah, okay, Christy's saying eight. So we've got the eight, nine. You know, I don't know why I was second guessing it, but this is all about abundance, but it's like abundance square rooted. So it's like times four, okay? 
times four. And this healing is coming in and we're talking about the bat, right? We're talking about the sonar. So there's just this, this, this gifting, this extra sense that's coming up. We've got the archangels that are leading us, okay, in this direction. We've got the giraffe. So, so I was feeling it's like this stretch, okay, this knowledge. The, um, you know, the giraffe can see higher than any other animal. And it's amazing what that can do. So it's like there's this stretch. I'm actually really feeling that. collaborative worker. We've got the ant here. So this is all about finding your place. In, you know, we we're talking about grid work earlier and here's the kangaroo. So it's like there's multifaceted and, and definitely crystals. The sapphire is coming up with purpose. I have a sense of the sapphire. Um, I'll take some champagne in my aura. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, let's go ahead on bottom. For those of you, uh, we've got this prize pig, okay? And that's what I was getting here right away. We've got the pig energy. Look at that huge, gigantic sun behind this prize pig. Maintain self-worth and self-esteem. And look at who's on here, Archangel Uriel. Okay, Archangel Uriel, and that is exactly the angel that's coming in for those of you here, okay? So this is all about an activation. Look at this. We've got the tiger. I was saying this is an activation to our solar plexus. Look at the sun behind the tiger. This is all about emotional mag um, majesty, emotional majesty. That's super interesting. There's no such thing as a mistake, okay? So majesty is what I'm feeling here. This is the royal star. This is um, my, your majesty. This is all about that uh, emotional mastery. This is what I'm feeling. Accept your magnificence accept your magnificence. Let's see what the eye of the tiger or the tiger has to say here. This is your year, okay? This is the year of the tiger. The tiger is known to be the emotional master. Like a lot of people are aware of the ferociousness. There is messages for those of you that chose this in the wisdom of the tiger. There's actually quite a bit of wisdom I shared on, on the infinite energy page related to the tiger that might be something that influences you. The tiger, it's just like, it's your year. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, let's see, page uh, one, two, three, um, which is so funny. And look at this, Nicoletta, I, I, I went right to the llama, okay? <laughs> which is interesting. Um, and also another in, ascended aspect of Sirius. So remind me and I'll send that to you. Okay, that wanted to come out. So let's see, the tiger, well, there's the pig on bottom. It's an alphabetical order, Michelle. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why sometimes I have the hardest time figuring out where these cards are. Okay, tigers came from Orion and they carry a lot of wisdom in their what? Aura. What? Okay, so we have a lot of aura coming up for those of you that chose this particular, um, wow, that is so cool. That is not a mistake. They're powerful beings spiritually as well as physically, and they're extremely psychic. Their sole mission is to watch over and guard the planet from lower energies approaching us. That's that part that's in your aura. This is an understanding of a gifting of your aura. There's something really special I'm feeling with the aura coming out here, okay? Michelle, remember, I can speak Orion, Christy. Okay, definitely coming through for you, my friend. And what's really interesting is, oh, this particular star is affiliated with the scorpion, 
which is it's the heart of the scorpion, but also it's close to the Orion, has something to do with the Orion constellation as well. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, all very interesting. Their roars are not only alert other creatures to the boundaries, but send a warning out into space. They raise the frequency in an area. No two tigers have the same pattern of stripes, so each one is unique. They're unusual in the feline kingdom, for they are learning to enjoy water and even catch fish so that they don't have, so that they can take this new understanding back to Orion. How beautiful. This card comes to remind you that you are a unique and magnificent person. Accept it. It takes you to tune. It asks you to tune psychically in, into a situation, a relationship that's troubling you. Tune, tuning in, tuning into something in your aura. Trust your inner knowing to present you with answers you are seeking. Then listen to your wisdom as this will reveal to you how to handle the person and the circumstance for the highest good. Tiger energy tells you to be prepared to act decisively with strength and power. However, you may not need to take action because when you have a tiger in your energy field, other people sense it and respond with respect. So this is about carrying something in your field that keeps you protected. The tiger card also advises you to expand your horizons, develop something new in your life, which you can learn to enjoy. So just like the tigers are learning to catch the fish, we're being inspired to learn something new and to bring it something new to you, something that makes you feel like that prize pig, okay? So I'm getting, I just can't help it. I'm automatically sent to the story of Charlotte's Web, okay? The magnificence, the magnificence of that. Aww. Nicola says, wow, this message definitely is for you. Yeah, I'm feeling it definitely is. And I love that I see all these angels flying around this prize pig. Like you are in this solar, this is, this is that tiger. This is that tiger. Like, okay, so look at here. I thought that was the sun, but it's a crystal. This is so interesting. This is grid work. This is that area that I was talking about, bringing things in. And it's like, as you stand in your place and as you roam, you are actually bringing in all this mat, all this energy. I see these beautiful fairies or angels dancing around you. And it's all about finding your heart center, okay? Finding the center, right? Wow. And this is really looking straight on. Both of these are looking straight on. I'm also seeing this beautiful on um, the crown of the pig here, okay? So it's like where I see the crystal on, where I see the crystal on the tiger, I'm seeing the crown on the pig. And we were all talking about, and wouldn't you freaking know it? Come on. Look what just popped up right behind that, okay? <laughs> It's come up several times. We've got to read it. Setting clear boundaries and enforcing them. So what's really interesting is that it's going full circle. And so I feel that those of you that chose this one, number three, I feel you might have an affinity for pile number one as well. I know Nicoletta's cracking up. See, Nicoletta, see what happens, girl, when you come in. It's been a while. And spirit is like, oh, yeah, let's give some messages. So we got to read it because we were just like talking about this. So the llamas, they originate from another aspect of Cirrus. They incarnate into South America, which is closely connected to Venus, the planet of love. They help us keep open the hearts of those around us by bathing them in Christ's light. And so this is what I'm feeling. This is with all related. It's like you become the emotional master, right? And you have this prize pig feeling which i mean you know hey and then look at the llama 
it's like it all goes full circle to bring you exactly where you're meant to be. Okay. And these boundaries are part of it. That's why I feel like there's a connection to the first pile. Mamas are gentle and they offer their wool and their strength of service. They respond generously and loyalty to fairness and love, but they know their limits and they set clear boundaries, refusing to be overburdened. They're social and they love to be with other llamas to help maintain their fifth dimensional fre frequency. The bond with and protect the animals they ask and look after, like the heart healers, like many heart healers. That's just so interesting, okay? Like the heart healers, they are gentle, patient, and understanding of those who need uh, or sick, raising their vibration and giving them healing. This is the card of pure love. It suggests your heart is warm and open so that others may not impose on your good nature and drain you decide what's acceptable for you and when it's important to set clear boundaries and the armadillo taught us that in the first reading so if you need some help there some questions to ask we're all energetically entwined and it may and it uh entwined it may be enough for you to define these boundaries mentally however Guidance is to be prepared to enforce them if necessary. You will find it easier to follow your heart, caring for others and loved ones in needs. But remember to find the time um, to see positive friends and do things that make you feel relaxed and happy as this will give you energy and keep the frequency high. It will benefit you to tune in to the cosmic heart, okay? So I'm just feeling that so much for you guys so much coming in for you just to follow the tune of your own heart and in fact music and frequency is really important to you and that's why we were getting the champagne the party it's like you want to be part of the party you want to feel part of the all but what's really interesting is you have to watch what you're giving okay as it's all a bunch of give and take it's all about the love what is their prayer from archangel uriel archangel uriel who's associated with the solar plexus who's guiding you to have patience right absolutely ready for the champagne i hear you oh i got goosebumps let's find out the prayer is about sanctuary wow a sanctuary resides inside you no matter what's happening. This inner temple beckons you to enter. Take a deep breath, enter, and sit down on the throne of your own heart. Hello. Can we get an exclamation point to the queen in owning your throne? Thank you, Archangel Uriel, for bringing this message for pile number three. Thank you for letting us know uh, and giving us guidance that we need to just find our breath, find our center, and know that there's something within us, just within our aura, right? And so on bottom, this is about health. Allow me divine to be tender and accepting of my body, no matter what ailments I may have. May I always know it's doing the best that it can. Help me be loving ally and a friend to the sacred form. And so I really feel, again, this is reiterating something that I felt that came up in number one, these boundaries. You know, we have, you know, yes, we are spiritual. We are 100% spiritual beings in 100% human form. So there is only so much energy and there's only so much that this beautiful body can take. And so it's a really interesting, it's not just about what you eat, but it's about your mentality. It's about your emotions, more for you that chose this in number three. And so what we're doing is we are, Archangel Uriel is coming forward to let you know more than anything, more than anything is that you cannot let the energy around you to dictate who you are. You, my friend, and this is the party that's coming up. This is, this is the ultimate thing for those of you that chose this pile. I'm feeling it with all my essence. When you walk into a room, 
You are not meant to allow those around you to dictate who you are. You, my friend, walk into a room and dictate the energy that flows. Bam. I am feeling it so hardcore with you guys. So please take care of yourselves. Please know that your mission and your purpose, like the sapphire that's unveiling, okay? That's unveiling in the fall, the uh, autumn equinox is going to be very important for you guys, okay? So just know, and we've been getting that very steadily, um, but just know that you, you set the tone and the frequency. You don't, don't allow others to tether you, okay? You are the highest vibration. People are meant to meet up with you. And so we have to be patient, those of you that chose this pile, because, because sometimes it feels although there's inauthenticity, but really you are the person that's setting the tone and helping people learn, okay? So that's the frustrating part. That's where your heart can be hurt. And then sometimes you feel, maybe and sometimes you feel used because at some, at some points people can't meet that frequency. And so energy attracts energy. Don't allow that frequency to drop is what the tiger is saying, okay? Keep that eye of the tiger with you. Keep that emotional emotion um, queen with you. Okay. Because that way people can, you can meet that vibration of what you truly want in your heart. It's, I mean, it's just so beautiful. Really it is. And look at, again, I mean, what is with the aura? Something's going on in that aura. Okay. We got the Ruby aura, champagne aura, angel aura, I mean, lots of stuff going on that aura. So yeah, definitely see what comes there. Okay. Thanks, you guys. We're moving on. I'm wishing you so much love and happiness and be kind to yourself. Let's move on to the very last star. Man, we are just in it. To, I mean, this is just so much fun. So thank you, everyone who's here. We've got the last star. Forgive me if I say it wrong. It's called from Maldah, uh, I want to say from Maldahide, that is not right. It's Famalhut. This is the watcher of the cell. This is the winter solstice. This is the mouth of the fish in Pisces. This is all about hot, it's hot blue with the companion star of the red yellow. So we got a lot going on with here with you guys and Archangel Uriel or excuse me, Archangel Gabriel is coming in with a message for you because you guys are the I is what I was getting, okay? The I. So this is all about something with your vision, something that is not seen, something potentially hid from you. Let's find out. Let's get the energy of your situation for those of you that chose number four, <laughs> celestial. Yeah, celestial indeed. Um, as Pisces, lovingly referred to as the garbage pail of the zodiac, right, Trish? And what I mean by that is you have so much within you. We've got the blue tourmaline. It's talking about, you know, this uh, variation of that throat chakra is that is the chakra for blue tourmaline. Tourmaline comes in so many colors. And hematite. Also, we're getting the throat chakra. This is that number seven. Um, this was coming up a lot last week. Okay. And one more shuffle. We're going to find out the energy sur uh, surrounding you. Now, I'm a Pisces North node, and I personally cannot wait for um, Jolene to be doing, uh, the, you know, the... Um, North Node readings, okay? And it's interesting because I just said, I'm a Pisces North Node, I'm a Libra Sun. Opal is my, is my thing. And on the bottom, we got the precious Opal coming out. 
Okay, so I'm actually really interested. We're gonna split one more time though for you guys. That was that was interesting. Um, hello, can I get a can I get some more feminine energy, some more feminine divine feminines here? Master number 33, ascended masters in the house. Here we go with carnelian. This is about the creator spirit. This is about the spark, right? This was that red, yellow, that orange, right? That combination. Ooh, this is going to be fabulous. So I can tell on the bottom, we've got clear quartz. And what does clear quartz do more than anything? It, and look at this, you guys, this is no mistake. We've got the vibration of the 33 master number, number one. We've got the vibration of 11 here with the clear quartz and uh, making a 44. So we've got master numbers. Numbers are actually important to those of you that chose this. And this clear quartz is coming up whenever you add clear quartz to any, um, any energy what you do is you actually make it stronger. So we're talking about creativity on roids here. We are talking about mass amounts, the spark of life, the inspired action, a lot going on. So right even before we get into you guys, before we even roll the dice, I need to tell you, can you please have a notebook? Because you are gonna have so many things coming into your world so many that it's just going to be like it's so easy to forget okay and also when we have lots of things coming in it can be very confusing but just know that allow these to come in and you and attack and i'm hearing and what i'm getting is like yeah i'm actually seeing in my mind's eye it's like you are the eye that's so interesting there's this energy coming in towards you towards you you are the eye of the spiral coming in towards you and because you're in the eye because you're in the center you can literally look up and grab and take any part of those ideas swirling around you okay but this is the thing it needs to be inspired action collaboration okay so don't this is the secret message because I feel like it's a test. This is an initiation here. We're going to find out more information to see if it, but I'm feeling it so wholeheartedly, is that you're not meant to develop all of them now. You're meant to allow inspired action to happen, true collaboration with source. We receive the idea, we feel it out, and then we feel inspired to take action. So yes, we're going to have all these ideas and you, you're going to burn yourself out trying to bring all of them to fruition. Okay, so it's a matter of honing into your intuition. It's a matter of understanding that you have, that you are going through an initiation, a test. So let's see who's going to come forward. Wow, I'm feeling so much energy. Yeah, two. This is about your purpose. This is about you now. And how ironic, how ironic that we have the cosmic energy coming forward in our star cord astro oracle. And, you know... <laughs> the cosmic energy for those of you that chose this particular star is off the hook, okay? Off the hook. I can just feel it, okay? So let's go ahead and shuffle your energy in. Trish is like, yep, this is me, okay? And so your ascended masters, I believe, pulled you to this reading just number one, that you understand that there's initiation. Yep. Fifth house to your passion. Okay. You're feeling these passions, that spark of passion, the spark. There's like a spark. I keep saying it, a spark. Okay. And um, Carnelian and also your seventh house. Okay. So fifth and seventh house relationships okay this makes so much sense so let's go ahead and pull a card and see what's coming forward <laughs> come on are you freaking serious look at the magic here 
It's Pisces. This is just crazy. Now, what's so interesting and crazy, I didn't even notice it, but it's number 12. I literally just said your fifth house and your seventh house. So, and it was interesting because in my mind's eye, I was like, but it's all about balance because I was getting the vibration of the 12, which is a three numbers. Just talk to me. Okay. Whoa. So let's go ahead because there is something in here meant for my meant for those of you it's all about sensitize okay and i love this because we have the two fish this is a beautiful card isn't it just gorgeous and we've got the two different fish and what's super interesting about this last star is this is the eye okay the eye of one of the fish um which is just really super cool okay so let's go ahead and get familiar and see what this particular card has to say about, about Pisces. <clears throat> and what's interesting, okay, before I even read it, because I want, uh, it's really interesting because I'm getting these, these fish and this duality, and I'm seeing this energy on here. It's like these yellows and flowers. And then the other one is, it's like the sun and moon working together. That's the duality, okay? the sun and moon, and it's like finding your space in between as, as, as I feel uh, that this card is saying that you work with all the different energies and they affect us in all different ways, right? But those of you that chose this particular deck, the cosmic energy coming in is very important to you. And the reason I'm saying this is because you are collective workers, you're divine femme collective workers, but you are assisting and bringing in an age, okay? So we are leaving the age of Pisces and we're bringing in the Aquarius, the Aquarian age. And so I feel like this is really relevant. So let's find out. The symbol of Pisces is two fish, usually swimming in opposite directions, okay? Pisces rules the feet and resonates with wetlands, streams, and ponds, ruled by expansive Jupiter in traditional astrology and by intuitive Neptune in modern, astro in modern astrology. Mutable water sign Pisces calls us to sense our dreams and intuitive perceptions. The seer, yeah, the eye, right? For the, it trickles the streams of understanding. The sun shines in Pisces, February 20th through March 20th, okay? So there we go. We've got the, the twos coming in, right? Two plus zero, spire. This is all about your mission. Pisces asks you to swim with ambition. Excuse me. Pisces asks us, asks us to swim in the ambient pool of emotion and be moved to compassionate action. With Pisces, think of a vast watery landscape with streams meandering over fields through ponds and swamps where the different elements of diverse species flow together in one subtle bound, boundaryless and fertile landscape. Appreciate all the diverse voices in this situation and take action as the tributaries to your river. This complex ecology has so much more to say and so much more robust than any simple monoculture. And it's interesting because that's what I was feeling. If you think about the water sign, if you think about a river and you think about the fish in the river, but then the fish affect the shells in the river and the shells affect, you know, the mud of the river and the mud uh, affects the minerals and the mineral affects the ingestion to the animals and the animals affect the, um, you know, the food supply for the locals and so on and so on and so on, okay? The situation you're fa facing is subtle and complex. That's a duality, but that is the strength. This movement, this moment, excuse me, calls for finer perceptions, a more sensitive microphone. Be aware of what other people's feelings as you are your own, but know whose feelings are whose. So here we are talking about boundaries again. Track carefully what you soak up from others and what is true to your own wellspring. Learn to honor a twin perception that we are both individual cells on our own work to do and that our cells are embodied in the body of creation. Healthy boundaries help us to do individual work. 
interesting. We're getting more boundaries. Okay. I definitely am feeling that interlaced with the other readings. So beautiful stuff in reading number one about setting boundaries. Spiritual practice can help us shift our perception from the cell mind to our role in the body of one. Here's the challenge. Pisces permeability can leave you lost in the swamp, a morph, amorphous wandering, wondering whether your sadness is your own or if it has been sponged up by the surroundings. Empathize with others, but don't try to carry everyone else's pain for them and double the burden. The gift. Tune into the healthy ecosystem with Piscean sensitive perception. We are all cells in the body of one. Healthy individuals contribute to the health of the whole. And so that's really interesting is because, you know, <laughs> we were talking about how you, how you affect the all, okay? Now I wanna go and clarify, I wanna get this on bottom <laughs> and clarify, and we got transients coming here, okay? Now look at this, look at this card and what is it showing? It's showing somebody leaned over the center. There's this like blue center, okay? But again, we were talking about this particular star is affected. It has a companion, okay? Hold on, let me, let me come back here. And that companion is the masculine, okay? We got the carnelian energy talking about the sacral, but we can't forget how it reflects on our vision. Okay, because that's the companion to the sacral chakra is our third eye. And that is the eye, how we see ourselves. Okay, hot blue. So it's like we feel this hot blue passion. Okay, that feminine energy. But at the same point in time, we need to stand in our power and have that companion of sitting in our power. Okay, so here we go. Another 55 right? Another initiation. So this is the initiation that we're coming into and the ascended masters. This is a test about how much you will burden yourself about the climate, about the energy around you and how you see yourself in that energy. Okay. Reminding you to think about the tips that we just talked about with the Piscean. Okay. With this Pisces here, and it's talking about the duality of things and about how how maintaining balance is the the easiest thing for you to do otherwise i'm feeling you know what i see here this makes me think of when you're cramping when you're cramping during that menstrual cycle and it's like you can't move and you're in that fetal position this is like what i'm getting here okay and it's just like you have to listen to your body again we're listening to our body and, and our body is made of the water. So this is just really, really interesting how this is all connecting in different ways. And I feel that I wanna clarify. I wanna clarify this Pisces, okay? I wanna clarify it. I wanna pull one more card because I feel like it's like we're, we're on the tip of the tongue here, but I feel like there's uh, more information here for you. Solar flares. <laughs> One more. I'm feeling it. Yeah. I want to get to the root. Yes, I do. Okay. So it's like, I feel like there's lots of, and, it, and in fact, I feel that those of you that have chose this, <laughs> it's like the Sagittarius is on bottom. Okay. And there's that passion. There's that fire. There's that potential, right? And it's so interesting how I can feel those two go together. And, and, and even the Sagittarian super moon. So this is, I feel, is like a new cycle that you've been into. And there's multiple activations. And so this is just like I'm clarifying. I'm feeling like there's some confusion. And the card that we get here is Palis Athena. Think. Okay, so this is really interesting because when we were talking, I'm going to read this for you guys. This is a 30. This is all about that balance guided by spirit. Thank you, spirit, for this clarification. I feel like there's something here. Yeah, let's find out. 
Paleos Athena speaks of a sharp and guided intellect. Mythological Athena is the goddess of wisdom, intellect, skill, strategy, and defense. Her father, Zeus, hello. <laughs> Hello, Trish. Her father, Zeus, swallowed her mother, Mitis, goddess of the wise counsel and planning, possibly to hide her from her spouse, his spouse, Hera. Athena gave her father a pounding headache, then leaped fully grown and completely armored from her father's forehead. This powerful goddess could beat the males at their own game and challenge the world to never under, underestimate the feminine strength and wisdom. We have definitely got a lot of feminine energy coming up here, but when the feminine energy is overstimulated, it can be super emotional. It can wrap us up into these illusions. And so that's what I was getting. And so we want to think before we act. Payless Athena loans you to the ability to walk into a boardroom or any other professional situation and be ready to take on a challenge completely in your power and just the right words at hand. Just ask her, Peleus Athena is within you. Speak to her. She can help you navigate your power, develop real skills, craft, craft articulation and teach genius with her support and your concentration. Connect your trained knowledge, natural abilities and the spark of your divine fire. Beautiful. Don't just overdo the intellectual defenses, meaning, you know, we want to stay away from the air, right? A little bit. We don't want to get in our mind too much and start overthinking because then it really just clouds everything. Make sure your intelligence and ability to rationalize don't cause more problems than they solve. Take off your helmet in the bedroom. Inventory yourself and see if you, like Athena, underestimate the power of the feminine heart or emotional intelligence. Keep that mind connected to your heart. What a beautiful message. This is the challenge. Whenever you're on a gender spectrum, don't think you need to deny or disrespect the feminine, the anima, the heart in you and others in order to access brilliant intelligence and competence. This is the gift. Ask for help when you need it. And divine answers will reveal themselves. You can think through a situation with a combination of logic and curiosity about the truth. But all is connected where? With an open heart. Wow. I'm going to catch up on some of these messages. So for those of you that chose this last pile, it's a lot of initiations. There's a lot of tests. We don't want to overthink it. We want to be able to pass our tests. So interesting as I posted about this today, uh, actually about feeling like I'm failing the test, but realizing that the fat lady has not sung. So we need to pull back in and watch those emotions, right? Watch the water, watch the emotions that we're playing in and realize that from that feminine aspect, there is real intelligence there. There's real divine brilliance there, but it needs like this carnelian, okay? But it needs to be wielded. Do you see how it has like all these aspects around it? It's like, you don't wanna just choose from one. You wanna choose from the whole picture. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and get a prayer for you. <laughs> Patience, my love. <laughs> Patience is what's already coming to the forefront, how I feel that creative blocks, okay, can happen when you get in your mind too much, all right? So this is all about keeping yourself in balance. Hang in there, sugar booger. I'm almost done. And watch how you're feeling, okay? Honey, please, just a few more minutes. Um, and watch how your feelings, okay? But let's go ahead and see what is coming forward. Money, 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 money. What? Your prayers are coming in your finances. 
This is why the creative spirit is coming everywhere to keep your wits about you, to know that that co-creation with source is gonna keep you in the money, okay? Now we're talking about the energy exchange of money here. All my finances are now in divine order. Love itself knows my needs and is the source for all. I needn't cling to gain or fear loss. And I, it was really interesting because earlier I was like, it's these attachments. Like don't, like the energy is moving fast, right? Like you're gonna have all these creative sparks. Don't attach, just allow yourself to be guided. Every need will be met through offering all to the divine. Keep yourself in that heart center. There's that green energy. Wow, let's confirm on bottom. Those feelings that came out. Emotions want to be felt. You really can't surrender something until you deeply feel it. Allow me, dear divine, to offer all emotions to you feeling them fully so that they no longer hold me captive and allow me to bring abundance into my world. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy. I can see that there's a lot of people talking here and I'm going to catch up on these. Okay. I can't read everything here, but I'm going to catch up on them. Wow. You guys, I just feel so different after this oracle. Um, I just feel so empowered bringing this beautiful, synchronistic, gorgeous energy forward to all of you. I can only hope that this heals your heart, heals your mind, allows you to feel connected. The angels are screaming from the rooftops that yes, the energy is spinning and yes, it's latching and it's trying to take us in different directions, but keep your focus, keep the love in your heart, keep the faith and allow your intuition to guide you as the bat comes forward. I am so excited to find out what the bat wants us to know, but I already have so many interesting things coming to mind. Um, we're dealing with our solar plexus. So that is ultimately where we're going. We're digging deep to alchemize what has happened on this Atlantean timeline, painful to many, especially you divine femmes. Painful timeline is this is the emergence of the masculine energy, but this is the thing. It's never meant to be a competition, y'all. It's meant to be cooperation. And that's what we're learning this go around, okay? So if you have any questions, please let me know. Christy Lynn says, wow, this must be why I'm mopping the floors out of the blue. I have so much energy. Yeah, it wants to be grounded, Christy. I feel like you, my friend, um, on your journey, I'm just getting this little note for you is that that energy wants to be rooted. So all this energy that's coming in, it wants to come out. And yes, it comes out through light, light language, but I think it's deeper for you. I think that you are also, um, yes, you bring those messages forward, but there's something about how this energy attracts to you. So I hope you found some, some notes here. And as I hope you all did. Okay, so I'm going to get into some of these messages. Thank you for joining me. This is so beautiful. Tomorrow I will post the animal wisdom from the bat. And uh, before I let you go, I just have to tell you how this all happened. So last week, the phoenix came forward. And as I was connecting um, with my team, Archangel Jophiel helps me with our um, with the animal wisdom and I was seeing the phoenix and I was kind of overthinking a little bit and I'm like how are we going to transition and I wanted to, to, to leave you with this it, and this is it came um all about I heard cave I the bat in the cave and I instantly knew it was Uluru the caves of Uluru which is um in Australia and it is the solar plexus of the world 
and we've been hovering around here. And so there's a story about, I'm going to share it. There's a story how I got here, okay? And the story says, in a nutshell, that there was this earth hawk, or eagle hawk, who had a brother named uh, Bela Yang, which was a bat. And the earth hawk said, come live with me. And, and the bat said, no, I don't want to. It's too dry. I just, it's just not, just not for me. And so the, the eagle hawk got mad and sent a couple, um, couple people, let's say a couple other animals. And what did they do? But they burned and scorched all the country that belonged to the bat. And, and what that did is that turned them black. But what's interesting is if you think about charcoal and you think about rising from the ashes, we all have to start somewhere. And so I just love the connection as we're moving into this next part of our journey together. And I look forward to sharing more of that story but I just find it so magical and so beautiful. And thank you all for joining me. I'm, gonna, I'm like rambling because I'm just feeling this, like I'm just feeling this like love. I'm just feeling this like essence around me. And this is all of you that's come to this container. So come back every Wednesday, Spark of Wisdom. Uh, Susan says, Griffin, it's the animal. That's so interesting. I have had the griffin come forward uh, before for me personally, another mythological, mythological animal, um, which is so beautiful. And I love that um, because, you know, myths come from so many, come from somewhere, right? You guys, they come from somewhere. So thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, look forward to connecting with you all. And uh, we shall see you soon. I think I might do, we're going to go out of town this weekend, but I'm thinking that I'm going to do some Sunday fun day or some readings just on the fly. So just kind of keep watch. Okay. Bye guys. Take care. And thank Bye. you for your support. And thank you for being here. Bye. Join me uh, Sunday for the attunements. Actually, that's what I wanted to say. So check out the attunements to help with this Atlantean energy to really help you push through. Okay. Check it out. The event is in the Ascended Warriors page. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye. Okay. I'm trying to say bye. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, here we go. Oh, I'm going to figure this out someday. Bye, guys.